Hello. So I was feeling led to do a follow-up to the last video to um, further, further explain the gospel because I know people are going to misunderstand and I wanted to show you proof of how Paul taught the exact same thing as James. And the whole point of our faith being demonstrated by our works is that we have a living faith. Okay, and I by no means was teaching works of the flesh. I made that very clear in the video that it's, I was showing from scripture that um, the gospel is obedience, obedience to the gospel, obedience to God. Not by the flesh, but by the spirit. So our faith is a living faith. It's alive. And um, I think people have been so brainwashed by we're saved by grace, we're saved by grace, we're saved by grace, which, which, and they leave out everything else. And yes, we are saved by grace through faith, and that is of God. It is not of ourselves, so that no man may boast. We can't boast of anything. I, that is true, but we have to walk. We have to walk in the newness of life. And that is commanded by Paul, all the apostles. And um, so th just the Lord was just saying, explain more because they, they misunderstand. And I mean, the spirit in me was just prompting me to get more deeply into it and show you from other scriptures. Um, the other thing is the false gospel that is being taught up, um, out there is that what Jude, um, the book of Jude right before Revelation was ex um, exposing this grace that you can do whatever you want, you can live in sin, and you're saved. That is that is an accursed gospel, actually. That is the accursed gospel. Because the blood of Jesus is precious. If we've truly been washed, we are new. We are made new. And we are being transformed. Yes, we stumble, and I, I covered that in the last video. We make mistakes, and we repent, and we are sanctified. We no longer walk according to the, to the flesh, but after the spirit, the spirit. So we are saved unto good works, that we should walk in them, and that shows that our faith is living. And that is exactly what Paul taught as well, that faith without works is dead. Absolutely. Um, but these are, again, I want to just emphasize, these are not works of the law. Okay? They're not works of the law. They're works of faith because Abraham was before the law. He had faith. He trusted in God. He trusted in God with all his heart. And just like the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Um, let me read a little bit here. Hebrews eleven thirty eight. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. But right after it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. I'm just going to skip a little bit and just show you a little bit. Um, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I just looked down 44. Glory to God. By faith, Noah, being warned of good things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Did Noah just sit around and do nothing? No. 
Noah was obedient. Obedience, and that is what Paul taught, and that is what James was trying to say. Obedience unto God's commands. Not to the law, not to the the law of, yes, to the law of the heart. The law of love your neighbor. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Um, and the Ten Commandments are forever. They're written in our heart. It, it, my personal understanding with the Ten Commandments, um, yeah, so that's a whole other topic. But anyway, we let me just read the scripture because I don't want to get sidetracked. Um, I have a verse here that I'm going to read to you, Paul teaching the exact same thing. Now, this is for people to understand that, yes, Jesus died for, for the sins of men, and anyone who will receive him and follow him, who will receive by grace a salvation and follow him, will be saved. But we have to endure to the end. We have to overcome and endure to the end. That's all over Revelation. Um, and I, like I just said, now the just shall live by faith. It's, our faith is living. It's alive. It's not just something we just say. It, it's something that's alive. And yes, we speak it, but it's alive. It says, if any man draw back, draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Because we believe, we obey. If we we're not obeying, then we don't really believe. Um, so Paul was teaching the exact same thing. And I'm going to go now to Romans 8. And let me pause it while I find it. Okay, here's Romans 8. And Paul teaching how those who are in Christ walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Starting in verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I'm going to stop there for a second and just show you that the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So that's the living faith that I'm talking about. And you can study more and more scriptures about, um, about that. I'll, I'll share some more verses here. But For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The carnal mind, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. All right. So the wonderful thing about Jesus, coming to Jesus, initially is that we were sinners. We had no power to be righteous. And, and, he, and with Christ, we have the power to be righteous. So we should fear and really do our best. Meaning, like, give ourselves, like Romans 12, our bodies as living sacrifices, offer our bodies Romans 12, 1, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is the gospel also. This is not works of the flesh. This is obedience in light of what Christ did for us. And because to fan into flame the, the seed of the Holy Spirit, you know, to abide in his word. So I know people misunderstand, and they, they don't rightly divide the Word of God. They don't rightly divide the Word of God. The Word of God is very deep, and 
it is wonderful what Jesus has done, but in light of what he's done, we need to walk, you know, live for him. And I'm going to put that verse in conclusion and a few other verses. I don't want this, this one to be very long. I may make another part, but I'm going to put the verses about he died so that we no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died for us. And a couple other verses I will put on there. But I encourage you on this subject to also read Romans 6 because it explains um, how we are to walk in light of what Christ has done for us. And then, you, you know, you can read Romans 6, 7, and 8. And, and this might help young people or young people in the faith, baby Christians, you know, who are humble and wanting to um, grow because we're commanded to grow also. But we grow through obedience, and we grow through um, through hearing the word, through hearing the word and applying it to our lives with the help of the Holy Spirit. But we devote ourselves to it. We devote ourselves to it. Hallelujah. Jesus is worthy. Um, so, yeah, I hope this helps. Um, thanks for listening. Have a blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen.